you're right. It, it is unfair that a woman that decides to be forceful and powerful and disagreeable is seen as a hard-nosed bitch, whereas a man that does that is seen to be a go-getter. Mm-hmm. There's a fundamental low-level sexism that's going on here that presumes that what men do is correct, and this has been imbibed by women and then fed back out again. Why is it that femininity isn't something that you should strive to be within a business? The subtext of you, of, of somebody saying, um, it's not fair that women can't be hard-nosed bitches, uh, can't, can't be uh, mm-hmm. like aggressive in business without being called like mm-hmm. arseholes. Um, what that presumes is that being hard-nosed is desirable. It takes a male frame of the world and says, that's what we should be aiming for. It's like, hang on a second. Why? I don't think that that's necessarily what you should be aiming for at all. And then this is being fed back out by, by some women, by some corners of the world are saying, I want to be able to do this thing. Well, hang on a second. Like, why, why would you presume that the way that men operate is better? I don't think that it is. Not all the time. And yeah, that's a... That's an e- weird way that this sort of yeah, is. this fundamental subtext of like men is what we should aim for, women being able to earn more, women being able to do these things. It's like, look, that's fine if you want to do it, but a lot of women are very, very happy building a family, being like amazing homeowner, going into businesses that allow them to work with people, not things. We need to get more women in STEM. What if they fucking hate science, yeah. technology, engineering, and maths? What if they want to work with people, as most, on average, women do? Let them do it. But the presumption is because those are the industries that have had male domination for a while, that for some reason that's right. It's like, is it? Who's to say that the guy that does fucking engineering is more important than the nurse that looks yeah. after people when they're dying? I don't think that that's the case. Yeah. But there is this soft bigotry of like sexism that's been swallowed up by parts of the feminist movement and then he's then getting spewed back out and he's like, hang on, did some like... Did some men's rights guys feed you this fucking 15 years ago and now you're spewing it back out again? Because this sounds like you're putting men, the way that men operate on a pedestal so high and now you're trying to do that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So do you think that then when we're looking at, obviously we're kind of touching on now equality and mm-hmm. what you touch on is potentially like an equality of outcome because we're saying women want this to be equal across all fields. However, when we're looking at a quality of outcome, no one's saying there needs to be more females in bricklaying, mm. more females in, in bin men. Logging, is, yeah. Does that become more of a quest for a for power rather than equality? I think so. I think it's that typically the industries in which men are able to gain leverage more success. The reason that they want more women in science, technology, engineering, and maths is that those are the the industries that are scalable. You can make fucking billions. There's no billionaire nurses, right? But there's lots of billionaire engineers. And the reason for that is that you can scale that industry. Um, I don't really know what you want to do. I think that we need to dispense with tradition at our peril. And what we're seeing now is that in the universities, like look at the statistics around how many men are going into uni. It's like a complete whitewash in terms of how many women are going in there. And they're outperforming men in education. They're outperforming men in the workplace. At what point do we say, right, we've pushed too far here? It's like reparations, reparation payments. How long do we need to um, construct a world in which perhaps women have the advantages that men did? Okay, if we do it for three millennia, then do we switch it back Mm -hmm. around and go like, right, it's men's turn again. Like, take your... It's like, no, like the goal should be to try and find a very good balance, a world in which everybody wants to operate in, where they get to do the things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. If you want to try and... So I'm sure that you're familiar with this. Jordan Peterson talks about in Sweden one of the most egalitarian countries in the world, they decided to try and remove as many gender biases from recruitment as possible. And the differences between groups got greater in the opposite direction to the one that they thought. More women went into teaching and nursing. More men went into science, technology, engineering, and maths. Why? Because that's what they're fucking built to do. Mm. Men want to look at things. Women want to look at people. That's why they're, they're programmed to do that. Man, pick wood, carry water, chop thing, create fire, get fucking animal back, Mm -hmm. feed camp. Women, create baby, look after family, make sure that grandma is okay, um, fix tents, like home ownership. That is what we are built to do. That is not for me to say that women can't do whatever they want to. I'm not trying to keep people in their place. 
But in the same way as people complain about the fact that McDonald's is food that's misaligned for us, it looks like food but isn't nutritional. Why? Because we didn't have it ancestrally. Okay, so you want to hold on to a Paleolithic approach for diet, an ancestral approach for diet, but not for roles within the family? Apparently not. I don't know. I, I think that I wonder how many women in 50 years' time and how many men are going to look back on the sort of lives that they led that they were told would make them happy and look back and go, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that was right for me. I think you need to be a very, very particular type of woman to make it to 50 years old and look back without a family and say that it was the right idea. It's not to say that they don't exist, but it's to say that you need it's to be a, a very unique sort of human for that to be the case. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think sort of the next 10 years or so will be, will be an interesting one. We've definitely had like a, a reckoning around the Me Too movement, which was completely required to try and call men to account for using positions of power in order to get sexual access. Like that's that's not good. And that needed to be fixed. And it has. The concern is if you continue to uh, downregulate men's ability to to like access status, resources and wealth, you're going to end up with this huge disaffected group of incels that can't have sex at the bottom because no woman will look at them. And a group of women that are all high performers that can't find a mate they're fundamentally attracted to. You can't get around this. And no one knew, no one could have predicted the fact mm -hmm. that, there, that this was going to occur when you enable women to go into the workplace, get education, gain status and resources, that they're going to shrink their own dating pool. When you tell people this, they're like, <laughs> fuck. Boom. <laughs> fuck. That's actually happening right in front of me. I know a friend. I've got this friend, this girl who runs her own fucking business. Like, it's happening in front of our eyes. I think it's because a lot of time, a lot of the attention, especially the last couple of years, has, has gone towards looking at what a radical feminist is saying about the numbers, about there's not that many women in this type of job. They're not a top earner in this mm -hmm. sort of field. And you don't get a full spectrum across the board of what is going in or what's going on in other job roles. Potentially further down the financial ladder of where there's no equality in that sector whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's only in that top performing sector that yeah. the numbers are being And they're not bothered from. about the fact that there's no women in logging, which is the most dangerous uh, job in terms of like mortality rate to have. Not bothered about there being no more female bricklayers. Why? It's this fundamental like soft bigotry of sexism that's coming through. The presumption is that what men do is supposed to be right, but what, when, what men do when they get to make loads of money. I don't and, know. And obviously also the disadvantages well, sort of suicide rates the percentage that are in prisons. Deaths by violent crime. Yeah, and, and again, universities. And this isn't a kind of pro-men bashing feminists. It's just a kind of discussion that I, I well, want to have. And, and obviously, get your perspective I'm... in it as well. And I think that's important because you are the type of female who is more muscular. You are... Uh, a, a business a, owner. A boss, a boss bitch. And, and, I, and, I, was, and, I, and I, was, I was attracted to that as well. <laughs> So be, I mean, it's a very strange, I think it's a very, it's in the moment where it's a very strange conversation. I don't really know because I, to be fair to myself, I try and pay not much too attention to it because I don't really know what's going on with it. I do what I do and I love to empower women in the fitness space. I think more so what I do is to empower women to, yeah, I mean, muscularity, female muscularity. I carry a lot of muscle. I always have. I don't want women to feel ashamed that they do have muscle because I just think it's it's a confidence thing. It makes you feel amazing. That's the route that I go down. I built a business from doing that. I get asked a lot of the time, which does make me a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, do people just think you're really bossy? Absolutely, because you're assertive. Not, because mm. I'm very, I'm very assertive. I'm very determined. I've, I've always been super driven. Mm. I probably got that from swimming without even realizing. And I, when people say like, "Are you like, are you really bossy?" No, you're going to ask Ben if he's super bossy. Mm. So things like that, I guess they do piss me off because I don't really understand. I can understand why that would. Why they have that perception of me, and obviously the perception of making money. I do very well for myself. I make a lot of money. I have friends from uni who are just completely very unsupportive women, other, other girls, mm. super unsupportive of the situation that I've, that I'm in now. And that's not coming from other guys. Yeah. A lot of that's my uni friends who own. were guys, yeah. 
are super proud of me and I'm I'm in touch with like a few of them and I I don't know I don't know where that comes from but yeah I guess the only thing that really frustrates me and I say to them when people like are you like super bossy like are you like a bit of a bitch like are you like super Could you imagine though if you were in if if Ben was in the business and he was like hyper feminine though it would actually probably be a little bit less likely to bring it up, but people would think, like, how does that guy run that business? Mm-hmm. Because it's a mismatch between what we predict about somebody and what usually happens. Mm-hmm. Like We think that the guy that runs the business is supposed to be assertive, and we typically would think that the girl would be more subdued. So when you have an assertive girl, you think, that stands out, that's interesting. Now, some people might deliver it in a, a different way. If, if you were able to ask the question appropriately, it would be like, Tell me what it's like to be assertive as a woman in business. I think that's fucking interesting. As opposed to, do people find you bossy? That's just yeah. like a shit question. Yeah. I think the fundamental of the question is, you break the mold a little bit. I want to know why. Or you're a, a super feminine guy that operates in a space that needs to be more cutthroat and it's mm-hmm. all about decision making and stuff like that. That's a little bit different. Most people probably wouldn't ask that question. Mm-hmm. But if they did, they'd go, look, man, you seem like you're sort of quite a subdued, more introverted, sort of shy kind of, kind of person that doesn't like conflict and is quite agreeable. How does that work when you go into business? Mm. Like that's a fucking interesting question. Um, So I think, yeah, people may deliver it in a shitty way, but I actually think it comes from a place of intrigue that's worthwhile because you actually do something that does break a bit of a mold. 